CB5, Worksheet 1, All About Radians. Oh my goodness. I love how, like, up to this point, everything you've done is like degrees, degrees, 360, 180, 270, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden we say, by the way, there's another way to measure an angle. And you're like, what? So you might have already done a little bit of work with this in one of the activities to get here. But let me just talk a little bit about this idea. If you take your uh, radius right here and you start wrapping it around uh, around your circle here, you're going to get something that looks like this here. What are we at? One, two, three, four, five. Now, this is kind of what's going to happen is you're going to get one of them two, three, four, five, six. Now you might say, hey, what happens if I had a bigger circle? Would I get more? No, you wouldn't actually, because all circles are similar. In other words, if you went for a bigger circle, you'd get a bigger radius, proportionally bigger. Aha, uh -huh. important. And so we would all get six point a bit. <laughs> What's a bit? Well, that's the bit right there. I don't know, is that? 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, I don't know, well, well I do know, but, but anyways, this is the idea of wrapping a, uh, ra the radii around your circle. Now somebody might say, like me, why do we get sex in a bit? Why is it? And a good student might say, wait a minute, circumference equals 2 pi r. Guess what? That's how many radii fit around a circle. It's not six and a bit. It's two times 3.14, which is 6.28, which is this. But, wait a minute, I know you know this. We don't use 3.14. We don't. We don't. But it might be nice to give us a little idea why that's always six and a bit, because there are two pi radii that fit around our circle. So in other words, how many radii can you fit around it? The answer is 2 pi. Now the cool thing is, remember how circles are all similar. Remember how if you have a big one or a small one and you wrap radii around it, you get the exact same number, 2 pi, every time. Now when things don't change, something important happens. We get a constant. Now what that means is if I take my circle and I measure my radius and I wrap it along that arc length there and stop where R is, there's going to be an angle formed by that. Now the cool thing is, you had a tiny little circle or a gigantic circle, everybody would make that exact angle. Because if you had a smaller one, your R is smaller proportionally, and so it would shrink. Actually, what it would do, let's show you the idea. If you picked a smaller circle, this is what yours would look like. You would have a smaller R, but when it wrapped around here, it would actually be that same angle. A constant value for an angle. This is a radian. What? A radian, one radian, is this angle here. A radian is the angle size when you have an arc length of one radius. Now the cool thing with that, which is important when you pick something to be a measurement, is it's constant. It can't change. It's like if when we say measuring by centimeters, that centimeter isn't this big for me and that big for you. It's always the same. That's why radians are so awesome. Now a radian, because it's constant, now we, we know that in a circle there's 360 degrees. This is degrees. Now we know radian-wise there are two pi radians in one full circle. Right? Because if we fit one radius like this, how many can I fit in one full circle? Remember, 2 pi radians, 2 pi r. This is a conversion from 
the old style degrees to the new style radians. Now there's some other nice conversions. We can take this by half and this by half. Whoa, that's cool. 180 degrees is exactly pi radians. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Because um, if you say to me that, you know, 2 pi is here, then at the halfway, it's pi over here, radians. Now, what would be 90 degrees? So this is 180, this is 360. What's the 90? Well, the answer to that is what's half of this number? Hey, it's pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90, and so on. And we can do all kinds of conversions, okay? Now, let me teach you a couple of little things here. I, I, I don't want to make this too long, but let me make sure I got some ideas. So, so uh, there's a bit on here where you're going to do some estimating how big is 3 radians. Well, 3 radians would be somewhere around here, right? Um, I think would be about 3 radians because pi radians is here. How big is pi radians? About 3.1. 1, 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about there. So 3 would be about there. 4 would be down here. 5, 6, 6 and a bit. 2 pi it takes me right back here. Now let me teach you a little bit about logic and thinking about uh, some of these conversions here for a minute. Let me make sure uh, I do this in a way that makes sense to you. Um, I love this conversion tool right here. And, uh, for instance, if I want to know what 30 degrees in radians is, here's how I do it. How many 30 degrees fit into 180 degrees? And you say 6. 180 divided by 6 is 30. So guess what? Then it's pi over 6. That's the conversion to radians. Think of pi as 180. 180 divided by 6 is 30. How about if I wanted 60 degrees? How many 60 degrees fit into 180? Three. So guess what? See what I'm doing? Now, you can't do that for every conversion, okay? Let me show you another trick, though. How big is 150 degrees? Well, here's the way I want to think about this, and this is kind of maybe different than the standard folks out there. Let's do this. Pi over 3, uh, no, let's do pi over 6 is 30 degrees, right? 30 degrees is pi over 6, but I need 150. So how many 30s make 150? Five of them. Oh, 5 times 30. 150. How about if I wanted 120? 120. Well, that's two groups. That's two groups of 60, right? 2 pi over 6. That also reduces to, uh, hold on a second, what did I do? Two groups, ah, two groups of pi over 3, Michael. Ah, sorry, there, that's better. I was like, wait a minute. Two groups of 60, that's what I wanted, 120. Now the last thing I'll show you is what happens if they're not these pretty numbers that divide into 180 or 30 or these things? Let's just get to the straight guts of it. This is where I'll end. This guy is a very powerful tool. If I want to convert to degrees, uh, I want to know what, um, or if I want to convert, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 180, and I get 1 degree equals pi over 180. Now what this does for me, let's say I have a goofy number like 100. Uh, I don't know why that's goofy, but anyways, let's say I have 100, 100 degrees and I want to know what it is in radians. What it's telling me, for every degree I get, that's how many radians I get. So if I multiply this by pi over 180, I will convert this to, this is in degrees, this is in radians. Now, I can simplify this. This would be 5 pi over 9. That is about 100 degrees. Um, let me talk to you about this for a second. So many things to talk about. I, I, I don't want to make this too long. Now, 
does this make sense as an answer? Let's think about this. 9 over 9 would be 1 pi. That would be, if it's 9 here over 9, that would be like 180 degrees. 4 and a half out of 9 would be about a half of pi, which is 90 degrees. So 5 out of 9 is just bigger than 90 degrees. I don't know, maybe you're not getting that. Let's try it another way. If, instead of dividing by 180, I could have divided both sides by pi, and what I get is 1 radian is equal to 180 divided by pi. So what that allows me to do is if I'm in radians, let's say I'm pi over 3, we know this answer, but let's say I'm pi over 3, and I want to find out what that is in degrees, I would multiply by 180 over pi, and I get a cancellation, I get 180 divided by 3 is 60. Now, if I was doing this anyways, I straight convert that to 180 divided by 3 and I get 60 anyways. A quick recap, Woo, lots going on here, but I don't like too long videos. If I'm going to radians, I'm putting in the pi and I'm taking out the degrees. If I'm going to degrees, I'm putting in the degrees and I'm taking out the radians. Good luck. Whew, that was a lot of talking, but fun.